Hello there. I've come up to the Heart Hope Valley today. I'm going to do a, a camp on cold law. I was hoping it was going to be cold because I bought the new uh, winter sleeping bag, the Rab 1100 Ascent. But I don't know about a woolly hat. I think I need a sun cap. It's absolutely blistering. It really is beautiful. I mean, just look at it. The views really are nice today. There's a fair few cars up the valley. And I've bought a heavy tent as well. A new tent I've bought for the winter camping. Three kilos. But uh, I've kept the rucksack down to just under 16. So it should be alright. So I'm going to start the walk once I've had a coffee. This is the start of the walk up. Very beautiful conditions. I've just watched two cars go past on the road and they've got stuck just around the corner because it's that busy today. I must have a camp with Jed up by those crags. Those were the crags we were going to do last week. Now the week before last, that's when the tent pole broke or bent, but uh, we'll come back and try these. He's got his football training tonight. It's beautiful. It's a nice grassy track up from the road. The road's, road's just down there. So I'm just walking up this quad track, three quarters of a mile to the top. I have to keep stopping today because it looks so nice. Fabulous. Well, the views are really opening up now. There's the head of the, that's the start of the valley. Across to the crags and looking up to Hedge Hope Hill. I achieve it's behind the hill over here, behind the sun. I'm looking forward to my camp up there with Jed. Looks a bit flatter. Still following the quad track. Just going up to the top there. Stunning day. It's getting cold already. I know the sun's out, but you can feel the, the wind just start to catch up here. You can just see the sea in the distance. Achievious hills really are stunning. I'm going to have a camp by all these crags this year. And coming up that hill with this bag made me realise that the bivvy is a blooming good idea. Anything is in the winter. You put your tarp up, you don't exactly keep very warm. I was in a tent, you can just get inside. I'll have a night in these temperatures in this new tent I've got, and I'll decide whether I'm going to use my bivvy or not. There's the trig point just up there. Beautiful. I'll leave the camera on just for a minute. Oh boy, excuse the bouncing. I just fell down a hole. It's a shame Jed wasn't with me tonight, but uh, he's got his football training. It's his birthday on Sunday, he's 12. So we're out for a meal tomorrow night. Give him his pick, and he picked one of the dearest restaurants that we go to, but he loves it. So we'll go up there. I will each have what we fancy. He'll love that. And neither Sunday night, but the wife might not fancy it on Sunday night because it's his birthday. So probably Monday night because it's a school holidays. I'm going to do a woodland camp in Harwood with him. And then this coming week, I'm also taking Bella out for her first world camp. And that'll be in Harwood as well. Because neither of the kids particularly like the big climbs. 
So I'm thinking I'll do a nice woodland camp. There's no midges at the moment. Get them tucked in somewhere nice and warm by some trees. And uh, see how they go. I'll talk a bit more in a bit, but I'll just leave the camera until we get to the trig point. Really is a stunning day. Very lucky. I've caught it well. So this is Cold Law, the summit. Wow. Nice little cottage over there you can just see. See if I can zoom that in. Look at that, beautiful place. Stunning spot up here, stunning. Look at that. All the way round to the Cheviot. We should get a nice sunset tonight. Wow. Beautiful. Right, I'm gonna put this down. I'll just have a quick wander over here, see what's over here. I've only got my shirt on at the minute and my hat. I've had to put my hat back on because of the wind. You've got no hair but it makes you cold. <laughs> Lovely. Beautiful. That track obviously goes up to that house. Loads of quad tracks up here. And there's feeders all over the place for the birds. It's obviously shooting season coming up, isn't it? Yeah, I'm still walking now. I'm meant to be having a coffee. I never seem to stop for a coffee. I just want to have a look over here. I'm sharing the views with you, really. I'm sorry if it's a bit bouncy. Yeah, that track. I'm just seeing where that track goes. It's been ages. I mean, I've been up Cold Law once before, but many years ago. Never camped on it. Yeah, I wonder what that's for there. A track. Up to a square of gravel. Ooh. Look at this for a bivy spot. There's a nice bit of rock there, and you could just set your bivy out there. That's fabulous. I'll bear that in mind. Could have a bivy just there as well. Yeah, I could have drove up there, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah, bring the Ford up, bit of off road on the Ford. I don't think that would go down well. Right, let's have a wander back up. Amazing, just love it. I'll turn this off because I'm only going to walk back up to the trick point. Get a brew. I found my pitch for the night. I'll show you, it's pan round again. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. What's the time now? It's uh, Coming up to four o'clock. I've still got a couple of hours to so start to get dark. I'm not going to put my tent up till nearly six. In case any farmer comes up, because there's loads of bird feeders out. There's, there's little white poles everywhere stuck up in the grass, and when you go by the pole, there's a box of bird food, so obviously feeding them up for the shooting. Another nice bivy spot there, look. Clear some of those rocks out and tuck yourself in, put the tarp across, use the rocks. But uh, tonight I'm going to camp just there, just here. It's a nice flat bit. Just there. It's nice and flat. It's on a quad track, but uh, it doesn't look as used. I could put the tent just there. That's where I'm going to be camping tonight. Stunning. I think I'll get me bag. I'll set myself up in this little pit of rocks and do me cooking, have a brew, watch the sunset. 
really, really, really nice. I love it. Just a shame I've um, got Jed with me. I don't really get lonely though. I like my own company. It's uh, it's peaceful. Be nice to have a chat, but you know, I'm up here. I'm enjoying it. No luxuries for me tonight, just uh, minimal. I've got uh, a few different types of coffee, hot chocolate. I've bought some flat whites, cappuccino. I've got this type of cappuccino to try. I've got my wayfarer and I've got a pot noodle. Bit of porridge for the morning. And I've got my stove just tucked in down here. Don't really need the windshield because it's in a dip, but uh, it boils quicker, the still of the air. That's all the food I've got. Just a nice, quick, minimalistic camp tonight. Just to try out the sleeping bag, really. I didn't need to carry the heavier tent either because there's hardly any wind. I could have bought the MSR, which blends in better as well because it's darker green. The van goes quite a bright green, but we'll see in a minute. It'd be nice to try it out. Right. It only took a few minutes to put it up. I only did the video just doing the poles itself and then I've just positioned the tent because it's freestanding and I've just put six, one, two, three, eight pegs in total. I put the guys in, I didn't need to. I've not done the front guy lines, these ones, because it's not windy tonight. But I've done the side ones just to hold it out to help with the condensation. I've done the back ones. I didn't really need to. I've put no pegs around the bottom of the tent because it's uh, not forecast windy. I've put two at the front for the door and the door on this tent, tent you can either roll up the centre like I have or you can roll up either side and I've positioned it so I can look at the sunrise in the morning. So that tent is rock solid. I know it's three kilos in weight. Van Gogh Mirage pro 200 it's dead three three kilos but it's freestanding it's got strong poles and it'll withstand the weather whereas my msr hubba hubba it's only 1.6 kilos and putting it up in the wind two weeks ago i bent the pole in three places and uh it's just not up to the job the windy weather i don't think when i camped on hedge hope three weeks ago I put the tent up in, in, a, in a slight wind I positioned it tail into the wind and then I had a real big windstorm about half past ten if you look at the video I did mention it a huge load of wind for about an hour and a half and the tent was buffeted terrible and it didn't move it didn't sound very nice but it was rock solid but for some reason it wasn't easy to put up in the wind. It might have been bad technique, plus we were trying to do it in the dark. But I thought for the winter, I'm going to try the winter camping. The MSR's full of mesh. I've got this one, 150 quid. There's not much mesh, just a bit of ventilation, plus it's stronger. And being as it's cheaper, it doesn't matter if the wind destroys it, because the Cheviots are a very windy place. All right, I'm going to do myself some dinner now, and... Uh, We'll see if I can do a time lapse of this sun going down. It's looking beautiful. Really beautiful. I'll get the sleeping bag out and the mat and that. After I've had my tea. See you later.
this rubber scent 1100 sleeping bag it's not much small by any count of the imagination it's a monstrous bag and it weighs two kilos i mean let's see if i can show you there's my arm look it's it's as long as my arm but that's the extra large exped mat so i think the inside of this tent is two 215 or 220 i think now the msr tent is two 220 but it's got vertical ends now i think this one although my head won't touch anything at this end i think my feet are going to brush the material at the other end so i'll probably get a damp sleeping bag now the sleeping bag's 230 centimeters because it's the extra large because i'm six foot three but we'll stick it in and we'll have a look so there's the sleeping bag inside. It's 230 centimetres of sleeping bag, so it is going to touch the bottom, but I can sleep diagonally. But I'll, I'll see what it's like. It's a two-person tent, this, but it's wide enough for two mats at the top end up here. But down there, it's not wide enough for two square mats because it narrows, but I'm only going to use this tent in the really cold weather, so I'll probably be on my own anyway. But we'll see. I'll try. I might try it with Jed when we do the wood camp, just to see what it's like. But uh, the sleeping bag is lofted up immediately. It's, uh, it's an immense bag, heavy. But my God, that's going to be warm. You can't beat these camping dinners for quickness. These wayfarers—they're not rehydrated, so that makes them a little bit heavier. But it's not like I'm on a multi-day camp, is it? But uh, while that's cooking, we'll just have a look at this sun. I've got the other phone there doing a, t a, a time lapse to see what it looks like. Just on the little tripod there. It's all right, this tent, I'm quite pleased with it. I, I had a thought, if I uh, take up winter camping full time and I don't mind the weight, I could always get a hilly bag or something, but I, I can't see me paying 800 pound plus for a tent. Not when this one's the same weight. And it's still heavy and it's only 150 quid but uh i've yet, i've not actually been in a hilliberg tent so i can't really say how, how good they are they're obviously built of premium stuff and andy wardle i mean he just doesn't move does it now now he's up the game with his black label it's uh it's an immense tent but it's not that roomy inside not, not for my length I need at least one vertical wall, if not two. But uh, like I say, I'm, ple I'm pleased with this one. 150 quid, and if it, if the wind knackers it, it doesn't matter. There's the sunset, and when the sun rises, I'll be looking at it out the door in the morning. Can't believe how nice the weather is. It was raining earlier today. There's forecast drawing, there's no rain due until tomorrow afternoon, so spot on. I've missed me camping the last couple of weeks. Not gone to plan like that. Three weeks ago, when was it? No, two weeks ago, that the wife had a show at the arena, so I took her and her mum and the daughter, and by the time me and Jed got back, and then got up to the hills. That's why we were pitching in the dark and we broke the poles, but I still blame the wind because I've pitched that MSR many times. And last week, the wife had to run a flu clinic, which is in the NHS, so she was running that. So I couldn't camp on the Friday night because uh, she had to be at work for eight in the morning. And then that didn't finish until 10 past five on the Saturday night. So with it being dark, at 6.30 I wouldn't have had time so I've missed a couple of weeks I have to come out it's it's my release I just love it this is amazing just solitude and quietness there's the top of Hedge Hope up there I think I'm going to have a camp on each one of these crags I found another little spot here that'd be good for a bivvy as well. There's the rocks where I'm doing me cooking and that. And just here, 
And there's this little indentation. If I put a foam pad in there and then me mat, you could actually bivy in there and put the tarp across, but it's just roughing it really when you can when you can have the comfort of a tent. But it's almost like a challenge if you come out in the bivy. How comfortable can you make it? I do enjoy the bivy. There's a little overhanging rock I'm going to try, not far from Harwood Forest. I think it's... I can't think now. I think it's on the same hill as a, as a castle. Lundy's Bushcraft. He did a little camp in it. So I've got, I've got to try that with the bivy before it gets too cold. I might do that next week in the holiday. Because the wife's off with the kids, so I can have a couple of nights away. I'll be taking the kids as well. Yeah, I'm not going to be at home much at this rate, am I? <laughs> right, well, I'm going to see what my tea's doing. So I'm sat in this tent now, the porch. It's good enough for cooking and storing your boots in and that, but uh, you couldn't really put a rucksack in there as well and cook. So the rucksack's next to me here. And when you come down, I've got my spare tent, my, my various bags and things there. All the bags I put in one place so I don't lose them. That's this cooking thing. So there, there's not really enough Although it's a two person, there's not enough room for two. I'd, I'd class this as a nice comfy tent for one in the bad weather. I think if I wanted to bring Jill along, I'd have to get the three person one of this if it was too windy for the MSR. Because the MSR, you can get the two mats side by side and you've got uh, two proper porches, one either side, so you can put your rucksacks in and cook. Whereas this one, you've just got the porch at the end. So it's a good standby for the winter for when I'm on my own, but I don't think it'd be suitable in the bad weather for the two of us. But it does the job. Brightening up nice now. Still no proper sunset. It was nice to see what did rise. Hedge Hope and uh, the Jeebit are still in the cloud. So it's leave no trace again. So we'll have a look down here. There was my cooking area. Just there, no mess. And my tent was just over here. Nice soft grass last night, it was lovely. Even made the difference to the mat. So there's no trace. And I'll make my way back to the car now. One last look. Beautiful, beautiful morning. I just had to do a bit more videoing on the way down. That's where we were up there, not far from the trig point. But I mean, just look at my walk back to the car. 
I mean, nice easy grass slope. Just follow the quad track and just look at it. I think when I bring the daughter camping for our first one, this little mound in front of us, just up from the car, be a nice one, because it's still a hill. She can pretend she's been on a mountain and it's not much of a climb. So I'm tempted to use this one. The ideal first hill, that wouldn't it? Just depends on the road situation because it was a nightmare yesterday. They've got the road with the Ford closed for two weeks from the 18th of October. So I had to go all the way up into Wooler and come back. Caught a bit of traffic, but it's not the end of the world. But uh, I'm going back to the car now. Here's the bottom of the valley. Langley Crags up there. I think I'm the only one here this morning. It'd be interesting to see if there's any cars. There must be the one car because of the light I saw in the night. Again, nice track. Very slippy this morning though, so I'm glad I'm using my poles. Well, I was until I was on the camera. Beautiful. There's the road down there. Beautiful. Back at the car now, and there's not one car. There's the parking area just there. There's not one car up there. We'll have one last quick look round. Oh, it's beautiful. Lovely, lovely night. I could always bring Bella to the side of one of these rivers and just, just pitch over here somewhere on the grass. She'd love that. Might be a forest camp yet. We'll see how she feels. So I've got the rucksack back in the car. Right, so that's it. Back in the car. Gonna set off home. I'll have to go via Wooler, like I said before, because I've shut the living road down, but two weeks worth of works. So it may be I'll go up the Ingram Valley the next couple of times in the school holiday, or just Harwood Forest, but this is my favourite valley, the Langleyford Valley, or Hard Hope Valley. But I've really enjoyed it. Kids are up, they've just been on the phone. Jed's looking forward to his meal tonight and his birthday tomorrow, and then uh, he wants his, his woodland camp in Harwood. I've got him a little uh, few bits for camping as well, so that would cheer him up. Right, thank you for watching. If you do like it, subscribe. And thank you very much.